But first, let's go straight to Canberra, where the ban on live exports of cattle to Indonesia has been lifted. Political editor Chris Yulman is with us from Parliament House. Chris, the Agriculture Minister Joe Ludwig held a press conference a short time ago. What did he say? Well, Lee, from tonight, individual companies can apply for an export licence. Before that will be granted, though, they'll have to prove that they can track each animal all the way through the supply chain to slaughter, and the system will have to be transparent, and the abattoir where the animals end up has to be independently audited. Now, meeting all of those conditions will fall to the exporter. In short, this means there'll be a progressive reopening of the trade. This is part of what the Minister had to say. The trackability, the transparency and the independent auditing and it's important to look at that because that will mean people uh, will be able to look at the transparency, they'll be able to look at the data and confirm that cattle which left Australia have left our shores, have gone onto the boats, into the feedlot and from the feedlot into the abattoir and they'll be able to be audited, independently audited against that to ensure that their animal welfare outcomes are met. It was the Agriculture Minister in Canberra just a short time ago. Chris, that announcement's probably going to be almost as controversial as the original decision to ban exports. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I'm sure we'll hear from Animals Australia and the RSPCA before long, but I'd be surprised if they will be convinced that the suspension could be lifted as soon as it has been. And let's be clear, what was demanded from some was a permanent end to the live export trade. And there's another group that needs to be considered. A large chunk of Labor's left wing was very unhappy with what it saw on Four Corners, and it was a caucus revolt that really pushed the Minister to suspend the entire trade. So I think that the Minister is facing a lot of problems on this from all sides of his party. Many people have been unhappy with the way that he's dealt with his job. There's one other thing that I'm certain of, Lee, and that this has damaged the relationship with Indonesia. There's no doubt the Indonesians were taken by surprise and they saw an export ban as an extreme response. And unfortunately, they also see sudden and apparently arbitrary decisions as par for the course in dealing with Australia. OK, let's uh, move on to a different subject, which is the carbon tax. Uh, you have some more details on what's planned. That's right, yeah, there's a lot still to be revealed about the government's carbon cutting plan and how it will work. It's being dribbled out in bits and pieces and that's including the news that the carbon tax won't apply to fuels used by households and small businesses. But I understand the fuel tax rebates for industry will change to cut subsidies by six cents a litre. Now, on a rough calculation, that would raise an extra $4 billion in revenue over five years, enough to compensate electricity generators and coal mining. Now, the Greens have long call for an end to the fuel tax rebates and they pushed hard to try and ensure generators and coal mining aren't compensated. So cutting the rebate means the government can argue that those sectors aren't being compensated through the carbon tax itself and that this is effectively a carbon tax on industry fuel. But there's a caveat on that. The counter-argument counter is that it's raising revenue outside the carbon tax and that means the tax itself isn't revenue neutral and that's something the government said it would be. And one last thing, a cut in these fuel subsidies will pour petrol on an already overheated debate. Chris Yilman in Canberra, thank you.